Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Anybody got a variety? Well, no, that scene was better, a lot better. All right, we'll have a ten-minute break, and everybody back on stage in ten minutes. Uh, Claudia, mind stepping down here in the orchestra for a minute? I want to talk to you. I'm coming, Mr. Barney. We're going to start with Act Two, so, Joe, change the set. Right. A- anything special, Mr. Barney? Yes, uh, yes. Let me see now, what was it I wanted to talk to you about? Something about my part? Well, I guess it was. It must have been. How are you doing, kid? Well, I... I feel fine. I hope I'm doing all right. You're doing all right, honey. And, uh, just between us. Don't let that Victoria Manners dame get you. Oh, she doesn't, Mr. Varney. She can't help being a star. <laughs> she can't forget it, either. <laughs> Let me see. What was it I wanted to talk to you about? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's about your long speech in the second act. Is there something the matter with it? Now, look. The girl you're playing is only a kid. Mm-hmm. But she hates her sister's insides. Get it? Mm-hmm. Well, that, that part of it's easy, but still, don't you think that I I should play for sympathy? Try and get it. Well, I don't think I can, frankly, but <laughs> if I don't get sympathy from the audience, I'll get a laugh in my big scene, won't I? Well, what is there to prevent it? Nothing. It's the way it's written. It's written all wrong. Hey, listen, are you starting to think that you're a star, too? The play's been changed six times. I'm going nuts. Oh, blasted cast is nuts. The author is nuts. But it's a Victoria Manor's vehicle, so we got to put up with it, and you do, too. Just the way the rest of us are doing. You're so excited, Mr. Varney. I'm putting up with it. If you don't mind, I don't mind, but, well, I just felt the play went out the window. Oh, so it goes out the window. Who cares? Oh, why am I in the theater? Why do I do this? I don't know why you do it. I don't know why I do it. I have a husband. You don't have one, do you? Nope, I haven't even got a husband. (laughs) Now, look, you're a good kid, honey. Thank you. And you'll be all right Monday night. I hope so. (laughs) I'm glad to have you aboard. You look awfully tired. I am dead. We're not rehearsing tonight. Why don't you go home and sleep now? I have got a million things on my mind. Don't tell me to go home and go to sleep, for heaven's sake. I don't know how a man gets along without a wife. My dear child, better men than I have been trapped that way. (laughs) Hey, Mr. Varney, you want to come out to the loft and look at the drop for the third act? Later, after rehearsal. (sighs) Oh, dear, dear, dear. You know, I don't think I'd like being a director. You have to worry about everything, including me. (laughs) I only have to worry about me, including nothing else. It's a disease. Incurable. <laughs> have you uh, got your costume ready? Oh, I, I don't wear anything important. As a matter of fact, I'm wearing the same thing through the whole play, if, oh. if you don't mind. Blue slacks and white shirt. It's nice and simple. Yes, it is. Nice I like it. You think I it's wish, right? I uh, wish Victoria Manners were as easy to please as you are. She goes from shorts to sables, doesn't she? <laughs> The entire rigmarole. Well, I'll... I'll try to do that speech in the second act better, Mr. Varney. Now, look, Claudia. It's very simple. Just forget the lines and act. It sounds very simple. (laughs) It's not quite as simple as it sounds, though. (laughs) Anyway, I'll have the author on my neck if I do that. No, thank you. Oh, it feels as if we've been in this theater three days and three nights without leaving. You know, honey, your husband's going to be very sorry that you're so talented. My husband is a very extraordinary man. He doesn't mind anything. (laughs) Well, I guess we better get started again. Hey, Mr. Varney, I gotta have a word with you. Now, look, Joe, we're just about ready to start rehearsing again. Look, just a word. It's imperative. Every time I hear just one word with you, Mr. Varney, my ulcer kicks up. Well, don't just stand there. All right, Joe, what's on your mind? Well, it's Hey, like... uh, honey, don't go away. I'm right here. It's a props. We're having a devil of a time getting the props for the interior. Well, haven't you been able to borrow the furniture? Sure, we borrowed some chairs and a console and 
pictures for the walls, but that's all. Well, let's see. You need a dining room table, dining room chairs, of right. course. And you need a secretary. Yeah, find it. Well, Eastbrook must be full of furniture like that. All those little antique shops down the road. They won't loan it to us. This is their big season. They won't loan us nothing. Oh, dear. They said they never sold a piece of furniture off our stage, and Labor Day week is a good week for selling, so no dining room table and no secretary. Oh, fine, great, delicious. We'll do the play without a second act. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not so fast. My big scene is in the second act. Now, don't complicate things, Claudia. So, what do we do? Must you bother me with every single one of your problems? Yes. I thought so. Yeah, as I said, what do we do? I don't care what you do. Find the stuff, build the stuff, do anything you have to do to get it. But don't buy it. Buying it is the only thing I haven't done. Look, why don't you get the author to rewrite the second act so the whole thing takes place on the outside terrace, huh? No, no, no. Or maybe you'd like we build a swimming pool set for a change of atmosphere. Very funny. No props, no play. Let me see. If I weren't living in a boarding house, you could have my furniture. But what's in my room, I wouldn't lend to a flea. <laughs> what do you got in your room, Joe? What I got shouldn't happen to a dog. Yeah. You have a play about a dog. What is it exactly you need, Joe? A dog. But for the show, I need a dining room table with six chairs. It must be English style. And a Queen Anne secretary must be English style, too. Mm, Queen Anne usually is. That's all I'm asking, not another thing. How is that so much? It's a matter of fact. Everybody on stage, second act. Uh, Mr. Varney, just a moment, please. There goes my ulcer. Mr. Varney, would you mind terribly if, if, if I lent you the props for the second act? Uh... Well, honey, I wouldn't mind anything ever. Just don't sue me for scratches. Well, I wouldn't dream of suing you, but we have a Queen Anne secretary that would just go perfectly and beautiful Sheraton dining room table and chairs. Mrs. Norton, you are my dream come true. You are hereby <laughs> promoted to the prop department. I don't see any reason why I can't borrow the chairs. I'm sure David won't mind. Well, I borrowed his wife. Why not even his Queen Anne secretary? Why not? I honestly don't see why he'd mind. I know you wouldn't hurt anything. Well... You don't think he'd mind, do you? Mind? Why should he mind? Yeah, why should he? Not one reason in the world I can think of. Dave is the kind of person who believes in all good men coming to the aid of the party. <laughs> what party is it that all good men come to the aid of? Loaning their household goods. <laughs> all right, go on. Call up your husband, honey. Then, uh, please, let's get started on the second act. Well, listen, th there's no need to call. I'll tell you what, Joe. You just get in your truck and drive over to the farm. The house is the third house after crossing the river. It's right on River Road to the left. You, you, you can't possibly miss it. And I'm sure if you go over right now, you'll find David home. wonder how things are going at the theater, Mother. It's starting to sound like a chorus. Every few minutes, one of us starts wondering how Claudia is doing at the theater. Mm, she's been so busy, we've hardly had a chance to talk to her. I hope it won't be too much of a letdown for her when it's over. Mm, probably will be. So I've been thinking of turning her loose on furnishing the house. Claudia's just been itching to go bargain hunting. <laughs> well, when she's through with the theater and has a little more time, she can busy herself on that. And she won't feel as if she's coming to a dead stop. You're a very thoughtful husband. Oh, not at all. I'm, uh, I'm going to draw a lot more money from the firm. I had a talk with Roger the other day. We went over the books. And starting this fall, we ought to be able to manage. Mm. We've been sort of getting along with a minimum of everything. Well, the pieces you have are beautiful. Oh, I'm not complaining, but I know how anxious Claudia's been to get everything all settled. It'll be a good time, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm rather pleased she's so interested in furnishings and things. You know, considering how little she knows, her taste isn't so bad. It's almost as good for sofas as for husbands. And mothers. Hey, where's my pipe? Oh, here it is. Mama, do you think it would ruin the coffee grinder for me to grind up some of this old tobacco in it? I wonder who that is. I'll answer. I notice you're in the middle of lighting your pipe. I would for the world disturb you. Mrs. Brown, allow me to say that you're the last word in mother-in-law's. Yes? Third house on the left on River Road. Uh, is Mr. Norton home? He's inside. Is there anything I can do to help you? Bring him a message from Mrs. Norton. Is everything all right? Oh, sure, everything's all right. She's rehearsing. That's a relief. What is it, Mother? 
Somebody from the theatre to see you, David. Message from Claudia. Oh, a private messenger. Oh, Mr. Norton, I'm Joe. Uh, I'm the prop man. Mm, pleased to meet you. How's the play going? It stinks. Oh. I suppose I'll get by. Your wife's okay. Well, that's encouraging. Well, I have troubles of my own. I come over to pick up your furniture. What? That's right. Your wife sent me over in a truck to pick it up. Take away the furniture? Oh, we're only just temporarily borrowing it for the second act. Oh, I see. Well, just exactly what is it you want? A picture, a couple of tables, or a chair? Nah, we got that small stuff. I'm here to take your dining room and your Queen Anne secretary. What? Did you say the dining room? Uh, and the secretary. Mrs. Norton said you wouldn't miss him. Mrs. Norton is a very misunderstanding woman. <laughs> we folk in the theater, you know, anything for the show. I'm starting to believe that. You've stolen my wife, and now you're about to steal my home from under me. I'm leaving you your mother-in-law. <laughs> Perhaps you'd rather take me and leave him the dining room. Sorry, we got plenty of character actresses. Well, Mr. Norton, <laughs> look, this is an emergency. It certainly is. Your wife said it would be all right. What do you think, Mother? She's your wife, David, and it's your dining room and your Queen Anne secretary. I'm starting to think nothing belongs to me. Okay, so I'll go back to the theater empty truck. No second act, but who cares? I don't care, you don't care, only Mr. Varney's ulcers care. The second act? That's Claudia's big scene, isn't it? As I remember, it is. What do you say, Mr. Norton? Do you or don't you? I'll even give you a hand carrying the stuff out. Well, that's darn swell of you. I think nothing of it. David, are you allowed to touch any of this furniture? After all, you're not a union member. Hey, that's true. Strictly between us, I hereby appoint you an honorary member of the Furniture Movers Union. Thank you. Well, Mr. Norton, she said you were a swell guy. Oh, she did. And that you don't mind anything. I don't. David, be careful. And I ask you, what good is a dining room table when your wife's an actress? It's better than nothing. That Queen Anne secretary would look just terrific. It's not a bad piece. I've always liked it myself. Well, I'm going to back the truck over to the front door, just in case. Yeah, do that little thing. Well, David? It looks like we're not going to have any furniture at all, Mrs. Brown. So it does, Mr. Norton. No wife, no furniture. No nothing. David, are you sure you should? You still have some rights. No, I think it's a fine idea. After all, Claudia is hardly here these days. She almost lives at the theater. But you're home. Oh, uh, home is where your wife and furniture are. So come on, Mother. Give me a hand with this table. The show mm, must right. go on. You'll hear some parents complain that they just can't keep the youngsters at home. Certainly, there's no sure method for accomplishing this feat. But it is true that when there's plenty of coke on ice at home, the high school set doesn't have to go out to get it. These teenagers like to have their friends in for Coca-Cola, too. At a quarter a carton or a dollar a case, this is scarcely what you'd call an extravagant gesture. It's worth trying, don't you think? If you have children that age. Very decent guy, Mr. Norton. Uh, for lending you his furniture? Well, it's not every man who'd do that for his wife. Well, David's a pretty loyal person. Yeah, I got it over some other husbands I know, like a tent. Say, if you think he acted loyal today, wait till you see him tomorrow. Yeah, what gives? The supreme test of a husband... Decide with or against a wife when she's wrong. That's what I gotta find out. So I'll be around. So long now. All right. Goodbye. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are... Whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>